Is Jesus fully God and fully man? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Yes, Jesus is fully God and fully man. Since His becoming man, Jesus exists in two distinct natures, one divine and the other human, without confusion or separation, but united in the one person of the Son of God. In Philippians 2, 6-7, we read, He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like man and appeared in human likeness. Jesus is fully God. Let us cite some biblical affirmations. In Titus 2.13, St. Paul says, As we wait for the blessed day with God and Savior, Jesus Christ will appear. In 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, St. Peter says, To those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have been given a faith as precious as ours. In Colossians 2.9, St. Paul says, For the full content of divine nature lives in Christ, in His humanity. And in 1 John 5.20, St. John says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we know the true God. We live in union with the true God, in union with His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and this is eternal life. And in John 20, verse 28, we hear St. Thomas the Apostle says, and Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. There are those who find it difficult and hard to proclaim that Jesus Christ is God. Why so? The Bible is very clear on that. In Matthew 16 verses 15 to 17 we hear, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from any human being, but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. Now, the secret is out. It is the direct revelation of God within a person that acknowledges and proclaims the divinity of Jesus Christ. Without this revelation, therefore, it is hard, difficult, and impossible to say that Jesus is God. Now, Jesus as fully man. We read in 1 Timothy 
chapter 2 verse 5 For there is one God and there is one who brings God and mankind together the man Christ Jesus In Romans 5 verse 17 and 19 Saint Paul says It is through the sin of one man that death began to rule because of that one man. But how much greater is the result of what was done by the one man, Jesus Christ? And just as all people were made sinners as the result of the disobedience of one man, in the same way, they will all be put right with God as the result of the obedience of the one man. And in John 1.14, St. John says, The Word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. In view of man's salvation, Why is it important to say that Jesus is truly God and truly man? If the person of Christ who died on the cross was neither truly God nor truly man, but a third thing, a hybrid of the two, then he was not infinite and therefore not capable of paying the full penalty for sin and he was not human and therefore not properly the representative of sinful human beings and consequently his death could not atone for our sins in revelation 1:18 we hear i am the first And the last, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And in Revelation chapter 2 verse 8, we hear, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. But it was as fully God and fully man in one person that Jesus made atonement for sin and became the only mediator between God and man. In Acts chapter 20 verse 28, we hear, So keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock which the Holy Spirit has placed in your care. Be shepherds of the church of God, which He made His own through the sacrificial death of His Son. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we hear, He reflects the brightness of God's glory and is the exact likeness of God's own being, sustaining the universe with His powerful Word. After achieving forgiveness for the sins of mankind, He sat down in heaven at the right side of God, the supreme power. Unless Jesus was truly man, He could not save us. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, we hear, He had to become like His brothers in every way, that He might expiate the sins of the people. Unless He was God, He could not redeem us. For only an all-holy, immortal God can do two things. 
First, to free the whole human race from sin and death. And second, to give us a share in the fullness of divine life. In 2 Corinthians 5.19, St. Paul says, Our message is that God was making all mankind His friends through Christ. And in 2 Corinthians 5.21, St. Paul says, Christ was without sin, but for our sake, God made Him share our sin in order that in union with Him, we might share the righteousness of God. And in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11 and verses 14 to 17, we hear, He purifies people from their sins, and both He and those who are made pure all have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them His brothers. Since the children, as He calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus Himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through His death, He might destroy the devil who has the power over death and in this way set free those who were slaves all their lives because of their fear of death. For it is clear that it is not the angels that He helps. Instead, He helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had to become like his brothers in every way in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in his service to God so that the people's sins would be forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.